So what we have here today is the F5 Switchblade from Eberly Stock. This bag has been available for the last four years. In recent weeks, it's seemed to have been on a lot of people's radar, likely because it was incorrectly identified as one of the packs used by the main character, James Reese, in the TV series adaptation of Jack Carr's book, The Terminal List. Although aesthetically very similar to the cobalt blue pack Reese had on him in season one, episode two, it was actually the Everly stock little trick as differentiated by the expandable main cavity, which is designed to allow it to accommodate full length rifles. There are already quite a few reviews available online about the bag and the different features and all of that kind of stuff. So I figured rather than try to play Monday morning quarterback on this thing, I would just give you a summary about the bag, uh, highlight a few key features, and share some of my personal insights on the bag. Well, there is a gray man version of this pack um, that I actually was looking at initially However, I ended up going with the F5 version just because I find that the 10 millimeter Molly and the option of having the morale patch loop there kind of breaks up the bag's plain design. But if you are trying to go for more of a gray man uh, style um, and are wanting to take the bag, say, to the office and that's your primary use and don't want to look too overt, you could. Uh, opt for that more gray man style. They offer solid colors, a gray, cobalt blue. They have a green and gray, I believe. And it, the main thing is that is it does not have this 10 millimeter molly and it doesn't have the morale patch uh, spot. This is my Arcteryx Leaf Alpha LT in the crocodile color next to the military green color of the F5 switchblade. So as because of the bag's dimensions, it is a little bit on the larger side when it comes to an everyday carry bag. But if you're six foot uh, with a larger frame, I think this bag would be perfectly suited to you. The actual real world carry capacity of the bag, super happy with it. It's able to carry everything I need for everyday carry type stuff and not look floppy. And then when I'm traveling, say two to three days, is usually what I pack in there. Uh, the discrepancy in the volume, some of the sites said that it was uh, only a 17 liter bag. So that's that would have been too small for me. I had the Tad Gear light speed uh, for a few years and I was finding that the 17 uh, liters was just a bit too small for what I wanted it to do. So this pack did kind of remind me of the Arcteryx Assault Pack 30. There were some similarities to the design of the bag. Obviously the U-shaped opening with the flat lay design is something that is shared by both packs. They both have these side zippered pockets. Um, however, this one has the added water bottle pouch, which I like because I like to be able to uh, stick some longer items in there. I like the fact that you can remove the um, compression straps and run it with without that. If you, unless you're using it. The internals are already designed for an urban urban dweller. So it's got the laptop organizational pouches in there. It's got your notebook uh, file folder pouches uh, pockets, whereas the Assault Pack 30 doesn't have any of those internal carries. Uh, it does have the Velcro, so it allows more customization for uh, folks who are wanting to attach different pouches and stuff like that. Moving on to some of the design features of the bag that I really like. The zipper pulls are quite nice. They have some nice rubberized finger pulls. They use a primarily number six YKK color match zippers. I like the fact that you can add compression straps to the sides if you need that. And if you don't need it, to not have it on there. I like the fact that I don't have to open up a bunch of buckles to be able to access the contents of my bag. On both sides, you'll see these uh, water bottle pouches, and I am able to fit a 32 ounce Nalgene in there, no problem. It's slightly canted to the rear so that uh, it prevents the bottle from falling out. Uh, it does use the traditional paracord closures with the cord locks, 
Um, some people may prefer the elastic closures on these water bottle pouches. However, I prefer the cord locks with the paracord primarily because I like to be able to adjust the grip on the water bottle. And I also feel like over time, the elasticity of some of these elastic materials and fabrics may loosen up. I'd be worried that the water bottle isn't sitting there as tightly as it used to. And, it, and I wouldn't have any option to be able to tighten it back up. The 10 millimeter Molly provides you about a 60% weight savings compared to the traditional one inch Molly webbing. I don't foresee myself attaching anything to these Molly webbing spots for just everyday carry. I do like to have them there, say if I'm hiking or if I'm going for extended periods with, with this bag as my main sustainment pack. I do like having that option. So on the back, you'll see this adjustable yoke. It uses a ladder system to be able to move this yoke up or down depending on your the height of your torso. So that provides a lot of uh, customization in that regard, which is great. This lumbar support is a very substantial design of the back portion and this huge channel provides a lot of airflow and the, the mesh the aero mesh that they they've used and the foam that's inside really helps to promote added airflow as well so you're not going to have any sweaty backs using this pack and uh, it's very very comfortable i really love the the design of the back part of this this backpack Going on to the shoulder straps, you'll see that it uses the same kind of aero mesh. It's uh, much thicker than uh, some of the spacer mesh, mesh that you'll see in other bags. So I, I can see this lasting a very long time. If you are running with maybe no shirt on, if it's on bare skin, I, I can see it being perhaps a little bit scratchy. The width of the shoulder straps help to mitigate the thinness of the padding that allows the weight to be spread a, on a wider area of your shoulders, providing that extra comfort level to the shoulder straps. This black area here is mesh that does go through to the other side, and it again promotes that positive airflow and prevents any kind of hot spots from building up in, on the shoulder straps. You'll see this Hyphalon pass-through where you can put your drink hose tube through there. It's got this um, sternum strap that is removable on a slider system. The other thing I really like about this PAX design is the grab handle. It utilizes tubular nylon with a foam insert on the inside. I prefer this to the flat grab handles or the grab handles that have a rubberized grip for the simple fact that it's it's very comfortable when I get my hand in there and allows me to get a full purchase on the bag and be able to maneuver it and lift it onto things. So now let's talk about the main opening of the bag. So it uses this U-shaped design. You can open it from the top and access the, the contents of the top part of your bag. So if all you're trying to do is get to the stuff at the top, you can just grab it and close it back up. Now, if you wanted to gain a full access to your bag, you could just rip the bag open like this and have access to all of the stuff in your bag while keeping everything organized, which I really like that aspect of it. Since we're in here, I'll just show you that it has three more rows of molly here on the top where you can attach uh, some organizer panels, perhaps some pens or flashlights or knives that you have in there. That's something you could do. I'm choosing not to do that because the top pocket is already quite uh, weighted down already as is, and uh, I don't really have a need to put anything there, but the option is there if you choose to do that. So I'll have a water bottle. In this case, it's the Plat Attack Decor Flasks. I can remove this top. I can put it into this slip pocket and attach my source convert tube to this and be able to use it with a drinking hose. And there is a drink hose tube right here, so I could just run it out of there and be able to use it with a drink hose if say I'm doing a hike or something like that. So I, I like that 
functionality of that part. The slip pocket is quite deep and goes all the way down to the bottom. You'll see it goes all the way almost up to my elbow. I have some three organizer slip pockets. So I've just got a Sharpie acrylic pen, I've got a sharp point Sharpie and a larger Sharpie. Up here, I also got a bit of paracord. I've got my Thrim cell vault, which I'll have some pain meds and uh, some other kind of medical items, medical pills in there that I like to have. And a Tide, um, Tide pen, which is always handy in case you get any stains or anything like that. I like to have that on me. Then I will have my uh, other pouch here that um, on the front, I've got my field notes notebook for any kind of notes I like to, to have there. I've got a, a checkbook in case I don't have as a backup to my cash. And I've got a Fisher space pen right out front. Uh, some of the things that I carry is I've got uh, all my cables and things for all my electronic devices. And so in the organizers, I've got my 15 and a half inch HP laptop, got my notebook and just some reading material in there. So this pouch, you can put a ballistic plate in there. There's a company that makes a ballistic plate specifically for this bag. If you want that, uh, that kind of added protection, if you're a concealed carry uh, person, or if you're doing some low vis work, then this might be a good, good option for that as well. This will fit up to a 17 inch laptop. The other nice thing about this design is that the laptop pouch is suspended. So when you put your bag down, you're not banging your laptop on, on the ground. So that's really nice. Also, if you have a bladder in here and perhaps it springs a leak, you get a bunch of water down here, your electronics are not gonna be soaking up all that water. Uh, the only thing that I would like to add is maybe to have a couple of drain holes down there, maybe some eyelet grommets to allow that any liquid that does start to pool down there to be able to be expelled. At the front of the, the pouch, you'll see three rows of traditional palace webbing with some Velcro, so you can attach any variety of pouches that you want to attach there. The inside has this kind of felt lining, which is the same on this side, so it, it uh, keeps your laptop protected and things like that, so that's really nice. So because there's so much space on this in this laptop pocket, I do kind of wish that they had added some way to kind of uh, cinch that down to pre prevent the, the laptop from moving up and down and stuff when you don't have a lot of things inside the bag. So I think that would have been nice to have. It has this little uh, hanger for your hydration bladder. If you're choosing to do that, you could uh, attach it to this. I don't really see myself carrying a hydration bladder in, in a pack like this, but uh, the option is there for those of you that choose to, to do that. So the internal pocket of your the bag can fit a short barreled rifle. If you have a folding stock, then that would be perfect for in here. If you don't have a folding stock, you might have to um, separate the upper and the lower and then attach it to the front. Um, I would suggest getting some kind of uh, Velcro suspension uh, strap just to keep your, your rifle from banging around, particularly if you've got some optics in there. Maybe put, a, put some clothing around it just so that uh, it keeps the glass protected. Since we're on the topic of concealed carry and firearms, Let's go over this pocket. I like the fact that it uses the rare earth magnet closures to be able to access that CCW pocket instead of zippers or noisy Velcro. This provides a great alternative for that. The only thing that I would say is that it may take a bit of practice to be able to grab your, your firearm in there, really reach in there and grab it. And when you're putting it back, at least with um, a Mark 25, I'm finding that when you put it back in, it has a tendency to catch. So let's talk about this top pouch real quick. So it's got this top pocket 
opens up fully and uh, just got a, a few things in there. I've got this monocular. It's always, I find it's a good handy thing to have uh, for navigating or a, a variety of other uses. I typically carry some um, power banks in here and I've got a pack of gum, two packs of gum. I've got my Olite 5T EOS, great little pen light, just a handy little tool to have and uses some common batteries. So that's what the pouch looks like. If again, with the topic of firearms, you can carry up to four 30 round AR mags in this pocket up here. So in the side zipper pouches, I just put any kind of um, things that I would want to access quickly. So in this case, I've got my um, CPR uh, pocket mask right here, and I've got just a basic first aid kit and tourniquet and some gloves. I do have a more extended first aid kit, but for everyday carry, just a little boo-boo kit uh, will be just fine. I hope you found this somewhat informative and useful and uh, hopefully the video wasn't too long. If you do want to check out all the various features of this bag, just go ahead and type F5 Switchblade in the search bar of the YouTube and uh, you're going to find some great videos in there that goes into this bag in greater detail than what this video was intended for. Thank you so much for watching and for allowing us to do this. It's something that we really enjoy doing. and. Uh, Hopefully someone's getting some benefit out of it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, please go ahead and put it in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, consider hitting that like and subscribe. It would really help our channel out. And until next time, we'll see you guys outside.